Good afternoon, everybody. Um, hope you had a, a good break, a good Thanksgiving break, and welcome back. Uh, this is uh, the last week of the of the semester in terms of the lectures. So, um, so in this last week, we're gonna have our our review today, and we're gonna have this third exam for, for the class for IE 4355 facilities planning. On Wednesday, December the 2nd, the exam is going to be at the class schedule time, which is on Wednesday at 3.30. And as we have done for the first two exams, the, you will have an hour and a half to work on, on, the, on the exam problems and questions. And then at five o'clock, you you will stop, and then you will have a additional fifteen minutes to to upload the the answers for the problems. Um, so the format, in terms of the format, the the exam is going to be very similar to the first two exams that we had uh, already this semester. So in this Third exam, we are is going to cover the material that we discuss after the second exam, and then we also are going to follow the same uh, framework in terms of questions. So, on we're gonna have two sections in this exam. In the first section, there there are going to be ten multiple choice or true or false questions that you have to answer in the computer. And then section two will have two to three problems. I think there are gonna be three this time. So three problems that are short answer explanation or uh, mathematical problems. Those problems should be similar to the problems that you have seen in the, in the assignments for these third part of the semester. The, the lectures that we cover uh, for this part of the semester are three. Um, we started with lecture 10, in which we discussed uh, the conveyor models. Um, and we, we talk about the trolley and similar conveyors with discrete carriers. Um, we computed the, the capacity of these conveyors. Um, looking at two different scenarios. The first scenario was the deterministic loading and unloading. And then we look at the conveyor loop with Poisson arrivals. Um, so for this material, we discuss a uh, couple of examples, one during the lecture material, and then I added an additional example, uh, an extra video with a, a, an additional example for the conveyor with Poisson arrivals. Um, so that was lecture 10. Uh, and then we, we transitioned to uh, warehouse operations um, in which we discussed uh, the introduction in terms of what, what are the expectations uh, for managing a warehouse from a facilities planning perspective, uh, the missions of a warehouse, the functions in the warehouse, the receiving and shipping operations. And then we, we talk about different ways of, uh, of storing supplies in a warehouse and how to plan for those. Um, and from there, we, we talk about lecture 11 part, 11 part two, which is war, warehouse operations. Um, in here, we discuss the the warehouse layout model and storage systems. And then finally, we, we transition to the last part of the, of, the, of the course, which focuses on single facility planning uh, location models uh, in terms of taking into consideration uh, the, the, the location of, of existing uh, suppliers and then Based on that, how can you plan for uh, the location of a new facility? Um, so we, we discuss the single facility location model and we discuss 
examples of how to solve this problem, which is typically a linear programming uh, model. But there's an algorithm that we can apply to solve the problem without having to rely on, on the software. Um, so we discussed the single facility location model, and we also discussed how to solve that problem using a heuristic algorithm. So those are the, the lectures. Um, so there were four uh, lectures um, for this uh, part of the semester in, in which we focus on the conveyor uh, design, conveyor models, warehouse operations, and then the facility location models. So again, the, the material for the exam is based on, on these four lectures. Um, in order to prepare for, for the exam, my advice is for you to study the lecture slides and the assignments. And I don't think we had any, any labs for this specific uh, exam. But we, we did, uh, I assigned multiple homework. So you should look at those problems. Those are representative of the type of problems that you, you can expect in the, in the exam. Uh, so again, my advice for you is to study the, the lecture slides and to practice the, the problems that were in the slides and also the problems in the assignments. Uh, the exam, if you need any formulas, I'll provide them um, in tables. I don't think that's the case for this exam, but if, if, they, if needed, they are going to be there. Excuse me. Uh, the exam is, is closed book and notes. There is going to be a link to access the exam in, in Canvas, like we did for the first two exams. And I ask you to clearly show your work and all formulas used in your solution. This will help me award full or partial credit in case that you don't get the, the right answer. Um, multiple choice questions you will answer uh, using the computer. And for, in this case, there are gonna be three. Um, so for the three questions, problems, uh, you're gonna have to upload a, a file. So as, as I ask you to, you can, you, there's two options for you to upload the, the solutions. You can upload a single file for each one of the questions, or you can put the, all the papers together and upload a single file with all the answers. So it's up to you, um, whatever works for you better. Uh, but always remember that you have a limited time for the exam. So make sure that you stop by five o'clock and that you since and then you have you will have you should have enough time for uh, upload the materials as needed for the exam. Um, so work the solution in paper for those problems. Take a picture or scan and upload the solution file. And as I mentioned already, you will have 15 minutes to upload the files. Uh, you should start working in the exam at 5 p.m. and then use the time after 5 p.m from 5 p.m. to 5.15 p.m. to upload the files. And the exam will close at 5.15 p.m. Um, any questions up to now? I have a question. Um, sure. For lecture 12, it doesn't allow, like I tried downloading it to my computer, um, but it's just like the link to go to lecture. I mean, yeah, a link that takes us to Canvas. Um, I don't know if everyone's having that problem, but when I try to download the PDF for Luxor 12. Okay, so let me see, maybe it is not open. So let me check. Um, so yeah, this is the wrong class, sorry. Okay. Yeah, so it is planning modules. So when you go to the slides. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I press it like that and then it, it opens and then I go to download. Yeah, and it and it downloads just like a link to Canvas for me. I don't know if everyone else was having that problem though. So you cannot see this uh, file, PDF file? Yeah, correct. 
Okay. Anybody else facing uh, facing that problem? Because if if it is you, just your, I can send you this via email. Just send me an email, and I can forward the the file okay. uh, to you. Um, anybody else having that that problem? Let me check in case. Uh, let's see lectures. Oh. Let's quit notes. So that will be lecture 12. Yeah, it is. It is open. So it's kind of unexpected. Yeah. So if you if you still have those problems, I can send you the file. Just send me an email and I will do that. OK, thank you. No problem. It works fine for me, so I don't have issues. OK, thank you. Thank you for letting me know. You're welcome. Yes, and Cynthia is also saying that she can open the, the file. So looks like it's, it's something uh, with your canvas. So yeah, I can send you that, no problem. Um, and, and if anybody else fi face some problems downloading the files, just let me know and I will I will send that to you via email. Um, so, so I'm recording this lecture right now. So I also going to post the, the video after we are done today. With the slides, uh, any any notes that we uh, we do or anything like that, it's going to be also posted. Uh, so, it, so so far, I mean, at, until this point, this is the format of the exam. This is the the material that is going to be covered. Um, but I I have several things in. I have some problems that I want to discuss, and also I have certain things that I want to make sure that you have. Um, you, you, that you consider as, as you work towards the end of the semester for this class, uh, that the, at the beginning of the year we discussed that there, for, for this class, the, the final exam is optional. Uh, what that means is that um, after you take the third exam and also you submit your project, the third part of the project, I will, I will grade the both the project and, and the exam. And I will provide you with a final grade for the, for the course without the final. Uh, and that's going to follow this, uh, this grade distribution right here, the grade distribution with no final. Uh, so what that means is you will have, uh, you will know what your grade is uh, before the final. And if you like your grade and you decide not to take the final, then that's fine. You will keep that grade and that will be the grade for your, for your class uh, for this semester. However, if you, if, you think, if you think that you can do better in terms of improving your grade, let's say you, are, you have a 77 and if you do very well in the final, you can get to an 80 and then get a B, then you, you will have that option as well. Um, so in that case, what I'm doing is, uh, this is the grade distribution for uh, the final, uh, with the option with the final. And the idea here is that maybe you didn't do well in one of the partial, or you didn't do very well in one or two partial exams. So now by taking the final, and in doing very well in the final, then you have the chance to uh, improve your grade. So you see how the, the percentage for the, for the final is, is higher with the uh, final exam option. And also you see how the, the percentage for the partial exams is, is reduced. Um, so, so those are options um, I don't need to know whether or not you want to take the final. Uh, the, the final exam is going to be available for you at the scheduled time. Um, it's online, it's gonna be online. But um, so after you see your grade, you are going to think about it. And if you decide to take the final, the only thing you have to do is to show up for, not show up, but uh, access the exam uh, on the scheduled time uh, using Canvas and take the final. Um, so, if you don't take the final, what I'm going to assume is that you you want to keep your grade. So go ahead. I'm sorry. 
Yeah. Um, so is the final going to be cumulative or is it going to be um, uh, different topics? No, the final exam is cumulative. So it's going to include the, the material for the semester. Um, so, so the idea with the final exam is that if you didn't do well in the partial exams, you show me that you, you relearn or you learn the material. So you show that with the final. And then if you do well, that's showing me, showing me that you learn the material and that you deserve a better grade. So yes, the, the final is going to be cumulative. It's going to include the material for the semester. Okay, thank you. My experience with the students that take the final is that they do uh, well. Most of the time, if they decide to take the final because they are, they are close to the next grade, uh, most of the time they achieve that goal because they do well in the final and, and the, the grade typically improve. So that's not uh, true for everybody. Like for example, if you, if you have an 80 with the no final exam option, it's very unlikely, I, I will say um, impossible that if you have a, an, an 80 uh, that you get an, a 90, because it's not gonna help you that much. But if you have an 87 or you have an 86 and you take the final and you do well, yeah, then the final can help you get to the, to the next grade. Um, so again, it's a case by case uh, situation, um, but I will give you the, the, the information that you need to make a decision before the final exam. Um, any other question about this? Good. So if you don't remember when the final grade is, um, I always ask you to go back to the course syllabus. So if you go to the home, course syllabus is here. Um, so the final exam is scheduled using the university calendar. So our final exam is scheduled for Monday, December the 7th from 2 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. So that's a week from today, um, Monday, December the 7th. Um, so put that in your calendar. So in case you, you are considering taking the, the final exam, it's going to be, it's not going to be during the class schedule time. So you have to be aware of that. Uh, I will send an, a reminder via email, of course, but um, just if you want to keep that in your calendar, uh, then that's the date. Okay, so that being said, the, then I have three representative problems here. Um, this can be similar or something that around similar to these problems is what you should expect in the exam. Uh, so, so let's start with this one. Um, in, in this problem, we have 12 products that are received by a warehouse according to the schedule. So if you see this table, we have uh, time periods in this direction. Okay, so these are the time periods. And then you have the products at the top. So time period can be every day, every week, every month. Uh, there, I mean, in this problem, we are not specifying the time unit, but that's what this is representing. So time period one, these are the, the items that are received uh, per product. So 18 type one, 15 type two, uh, 10 type three and so on. And then the next time period, we get 28 of product one. Next time period, we get 17 and so on. So the question is asking, if you were to plan for your warehouse, given this historical information about uh, the orders that you're receiving into your warehouse every time period for 20 time periods, uh, and also using the information for these 12 products, if you were to find the storage requirements for both the dedicated dedicated 
and randomized storage options. Um, what will be the requirements in terms of the number of spaces or the number of cells that you will need in your in your warehouse to accommodate uh, those products. So, so we're going to start with planning using the dedicated requirements. So for, for the dedicated requirements, what we do is we look at the historical data and for each product, for the amount of time that we have available, in this case, 20 time periods, we are gonna look for the maximum amount uh, that we observe during uh, the 20 uh, time period units for each product. So for example, for product number one, the maximum that we are observing for product one for these 20 time periods is 45. Uh, for product number two, 47. Uh, for product number three, also 47, four is 46 and so on. So I have highlighted the, the maximum amounts uh, already to facilitate the discussion. So that's what you do. You look for the maximum amount of units that you observe for the uh, time periods that you have available in terms of historical data and you identify the maximum amount that was um, delivered to your warehouse or received at your warehouse during those time uh, periods. So the, the idea with the dedicated um, planning is that you're, you're planning for the worst case scenario, basically, in which you wanna have enough space to accommodate each product. So for example, if you look at product number one, you know that based on your historical data, the maximum that you have received is 45. So you're making the assumption of, you, it's very unlikely that you will receive more than 45 space, uh, units of product number one. So you will have enough space uh, for receiving that product in your warehouse. Um, same thing for product two, for product three. And then you're gonna have a dedicated space for each product. Um, in which you're gonna reserve that space to accommodate the products for, or the, the items for that specific product. So the idea now is once you have identified all the maximum amounts for those time periods for each product, you are going to add those amounts and the total after you add those amounts for dedicated storage is 571 pallets. Uh, pallet positions. Okay, so the, the equals the sum of the maximum inventory level for each product uh, is 571 pallet positions. So that's, that is the amount of uh, space that you will need if you are planning a dedicated storage for your warehouse. Um, and then uh, looking at the randomized storage, the randomized storage planning, the idea behind it is to you maybe you don't have all that space available or you want to reduce uh, the amount of space that you want to set up for your warehouse. So you look at the randomized storage and this one is it's not separating a specific area for each product. So basically it's a general area that you can accommodate any different type of product in that area. So kind of you don't reserve a space you can have that space occupied by any product. So in that way, you are going to reduce the amount of space that you're gonna need for, for your warehouse. Um, that's the advantage. The disadvantage is that you don't have a specific location for each one of your products. Uh, so for the randomized storage, what you do is you're, you're going to look at the, for each period, um, for each time period, you are going to add the total. So for period one, for period two, for period three, for period four, you're gonna add the total amount of units that you receive for each one of the, uh, of the time periods. So for period number one, 
think this is 234. This is the sum. Um, for period number two, I think this is 274. For period number three, this is 327 and so on. Until, I think this is the one that is 385. So after you do the summation for each time period, you are going to look at the list and you are going to identify the maximum uh, out of that column, the maximum of the sums for each time period. In this case, that's 385. What that means is, so you again, you're looking at the historical data. Right now for randomized, you are not planning for uh, a specific space for each type of product. You're planning for the overall space of the warehouse. But again, you are trying to plan for the maximum amount of products that you have identified in your historical data that were available or were received at a specific time period. So in this case, that was 385. So with, with randomized storage, the required amount of space equals the maximum aggregated inventory level. In this case, that's 385 pallets and that occur in time period number 18. And you can see the difference in terms of space uh, for dedicated storage 571 for um, randomized 385. So you have a, a, a significant amount of space saving, uh, but with the disadvantage of not having a dedicated space in which you, you know for sure where each item is located. So that's, pro that's one of the problems that I want to discuss. Any, any questions about this one? This one is simple. Just need to make sure that you do the, the computations with uh, carefully, right? So you get the right numbers and then you make the decision based on, on, the, on those two numbers that you are going to compute. Um, the next problem is uh, for a warehouse uh, location of products. So in this one, we have an existing warehouse that will be used for the storage of six product families. The warehouse consists of storage base of size 20 feet by 20 feet. Uh, dock one has been designated as the receiving dock while dock two is used as the shipping dock. So those are located here, dot one and dot two. And the area requirement and monthly load rate for each product family are shown in the following table. So this is the data that we have. Um, so the problem is asking you to formulate the problem using the model discussed in class. So this is following the formulation that we discussed for this problem. Um, so if I show you, this is the, the formulation right here. So I'm basically uh, stating that formulation for this particular case in which I know the number of products families. And so that's equal to N and, and so on. So if you look at that formulation, this is the formulation right here, you see the J goes from one up to six because we have six product families uh, and so on. So this is a formulation. It's the same formulation for each, uh, for the problem, uh, independently of, of how many products you have. The only thing that you have to, to change is uh, the, the actual parameters in terms of the number of products uh, and the number of base that you have available for your, for your warehouse. Um, and then uh, the part B is asking you to determine the layout that will minimize the total expected travel distance. Uh, and for that, we're gonna use the, the algorithm uh, that we show you in class in which you, you rank each product by this ratio, TJ, SJ. Uh, so based on that ratio, 
you can identify the one that is uh, the largest. In this case, that's product six. And then you, you rank them based on from maximum to minimum. Uh, so here we start with six, then we follow with three, one, four, two, and five. Uh, so this is the product ranking. You are going to use this to determine uh, or to locate these products, product one through six, in this warehouse facility. So the idea now is those that have a high ratio, TJ by SJ, those should be located in the better positions because those are the items that are moved um, more often in your warehouse. So you want to place them in a location that is easy for you to take them in and take them out from the warehouse. Uh, based on, 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 and that's going to be based on the expected travel distance. So, so first, first thing is you, you create this product ranking based on these ratios. And then the second thing is you have to compute the expected travel distance uh, for this uh, warehouse facility. And you have to take into account the location of those doors. So we have these two doors here and using the location of those doors and the dimensions of each bay, in this case, 20 by 20, we can compute the expected um, travel distance for each one of those cells. Okay, so that's what I did here in this uh, part of the solution. We have the expected travel distance for these uh, light blue uh, squares is 70. And then as we move farther from, from this uh, base, the, this, the expected travel distance increases. So you see a little bit darker blue here with the travel distance of 80, 90, 100, then in yellow 110, 130, 120, and so on. So the best location or the, the, loca the, the best base in terms of expected travel distance are the ones that have the 70s in this case. And the worst location is this one that has the, the largest expected distance. So using this grid, now we can start locating the products into the warehouse based on this uh, ratio. So we're gonna start with six. Six requires four bays, right? So six requires four bays. So I need to locate six bays or four bays for six in the 70 um, grid. So that's what I did and I'm done with six. Now the next one is product number three. So three requires five. So I have also locating, I'm also locating three in this grid where the 70 is available. So I have five and they're placed in the 70 grid. And then the next one is product number one. One requires six bays. So I can place three of them in the location for 70. And then the next ones are going to go to the next best location. In this case, those are 80. So I put the, the rest of them in the 80 location. And then I continue this process. The next one is four. So four requires seven bays. Um, so the base for four also, we're gonna use the 80s. So we have one, two, three, four. I still need three, so five, the 90 location, and then I move to the, the hundreds. Uh, so I have four and four, the seven. And the next one is two, two requires eight. So a base, uh, so for two, I'm going to start with the uh, hundred. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And the next one is 120 right here. 
and then I get to the last one, which is five. So five is going to take the rest of the space in the warehouse, which are the, the ones that have the, the highest expected travel distance. So those are here, five, 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 and then this corner right here. And that's, that's the layout. Um, you first start by looking at the ratio. So you, you understand what is the, which products are the, have the highest rank. Basically those products are the ones that require to be moved more frequently. In practice, that will be the products that are sell the most. So you wanna place those in, in a location that in which you can have easy access to them. And then you have the follow the same process for uh, the next one in the ranking and so on until you get to the last one. And the, the second part is to identify the expected travel distance for each one of the base in the warehouse. So you know which ones are the ones that are easy to access based on the docks um, in the warehouse. So you can place the, the products that are moved the, the most on those base. And that's what we achieve by following this, this methodology. Um, any questions? Um, what was the solution for A again? For A? Oh, the solution for A is this formulation right here. Oh, okay, thank you. Yes, so it's asking for the formulation of the problem using the model discussing class. So, so if you if you look at the the formulation, um, and if you I don't know if you have taken linear uh, linear programming or operation research, um, this is the formulation. So the only difference is that now you know what is the the number of items. So this is equal to six uh, for that problem, and Q is the number of bays or storage locations. So um, Q is going to be equal to 32 in that case. So the, the difference or what you're seeing here is the same formulation, but taking into account the, the parameters already based on this product uh, description for the, for the problem. Okay, thank you. Okay, good. And uh, the last problem, is, this one is the, um, the single facility location problem. Um, in this one, let me see if I can show this better. So in this one, um, Here we go. Huh. Just one second. Yeah, I have multiple screens and they're not showing correctly. Okay, so, so let me just continue here. Um, so in this one, we have the Ashley Country News Observer plans to rent a building space for a new print shop within the city limits. The location for the current distribution centers, expected deliveries and possible locations for the facility are shown in the table and figures below. And the question is to determine the optimal location for the new print job. So, so what we have here is the, the centers that are already um, placed in this distribution network. And we have the location of those in terms of X and Y coordinates. And we also have the weight in terms of the importance of how important it is for this new facility to be located close to center A, for example. So if you look at these numbers, the F 
is the center that has the highest priority in terms of being located close to the new facility. The next one will be C because it has the next highest weight and the next one will be B and so on. So this is information that we will need in order to determine uh, the, the location of the new facility. Okay, so we have uh, the coordinates. So we can solve this problem using linear programming, or we can apply this um, algorithm that we discussed in the lecture in which we are going to look at the coordinates for X and Y independently. And we're gonna use the weights to determine um, the, the coordinates for X and Y uh, using a, a ratio. So if you look, uh, the first thing that you're gonna have to do is to compute this number, which is half of the summation of the weights. So in this case, if you sum the weights, that is equal to 2,400. So half of 2,400 is 1,200. Okay, so this is going to help us determine the coordinate uh, for X and Y for the new facility. So 1,200. Uh, so now I need to find um, for each one of the, um, by looking at, at the centers for, for, for this weights, I have coordinate AI. Um, so I'm sorting the, the facilities based on coordinate X. Right, so I start with uh, the minimum is five, the next one is 15, so that's coordinate center E. Um, the next one will be 25, that's C. Uh, the next one is 30, F, and so on. So I'm going, I'm sorting um, the centers in terms of the X coordinate from, um, from small to, to large, so in increasing order. And I also, and I have the information for the weights. So at, once you have sorted the, the, the centers for the X coordinate, now you can start looking at the summation of the WIs. So for example, we start with A, so the summation of the WIs up to A is 200. And then up to E is going to be 200 plus 400, so that's 600. Up to C is going to be 600 plus 500 is 1100, and so on. So once you have done this, the next step will be to identify the uh, the amount or the sum of the WIs that exceed this amount, 1200. Okay. So if you look at the first one, is 200 less than 1200, the next one is 600, it's less than 1200, the next one is 1100, it's less than 1200 until you get to 1700. 1700 is greater than 1200. So what that is saying is we stop and then we are going to assign 30 as the coordinate for the new facility in terms of X. Okay, so X, uh, the X value for the new facility is going to be 30. And we are going to repeat the process now, but with the Y coordinates, we are gonna sort the centers using the values for the Y coordinate. So that those are these values right here. And the, the minimum is five. So we start with five. Um, the next one is 10. The next one is 15 and so on. And we repeat the process that we look at D, we sum the WI, so at, up to this point is 300, plus 200, that's 500, plus 400, nine, that's 900, plus 400, that's 1300, plus 500, that's 1800, and plus 600, that's 2400. So up to this point, we repeat the process. Now we're gonna look at the summation of the WIs and we are going to identify that value that is greater than 1200, which is what we compute here. So that value is going to be right here. And that's 1300, 1300 is, is greater than 1200. So the coordinate for Y is gonna be 20. So the location of the new facility 
based on this information, is going to be 30 and 20 in this coordinate space. Obviously, in a practical setting, this will be a location in a map, but for, for the purpose of the example, we are just stating the location uh, as X and Y. Uh, and that's that's what you what you get. That's the new location or the location for the new facility. Any questions? I have a question. Um, yes. For the sum of the weight W I for both mm -hmm. X and Y, how did you get those new numbers again? I know the formula that you did up top, but um, how did you get those numbers in? Under the this, sum of the this column? Yes, yes. Yes, so those are the aggregated values. Uh, if you look at this column right here, this column is basically this information, but sorted, right? So after you do the sorting based on the coordinate, um, so for example, you start with A because the X coordinate is the smallest value. So that value comes from here. This 200 comes from here. Then the following is E. So E because it's 15. So that's the next smallest value after five. The, uh, the, the value for W for E is 400. Okay, so, so you, as you sort this, these values, you are creating this column of WIs. And then what you do here is you start doing the aggregate values up to, let's say you start with 200, this is 200. Then 600 is 200 plus 400. That's how you get the 600. Then uh, the 1100 is going to be 600 plus 500. The 1100, uh, then you do 1100 plus 600, that's 1700. Then 17 plus 300, that's 2000 and 2,000 plus 400, that's 2,400. Oh, okay. Okay, I get it now, thank you. You get it? Okay, awesome. Same thing for the Ys. Uh, so you are aggregating the, the sum of the Ws up to the last value in that uh, column. Okay, thank you. Any other question? Awesome. So again, um, I'll be available tomorrow. Uh, if you need to send me an email or if you need to meet with me um, online, I'll be available. So just send me an email and we can set up a meeting. And also on Wednesday, I have office hours before the exam. So if you still have questions or doubts, you can connect during my office hours and I'll be available from two to 3.30. Uh, so I'll be available to answer any questions for, for the exam. And I'll be posting this video later today with the notes. Uh, so you have access to, to this as well for preparing for the exam. Thank you for connecting. Uh, was expecting more people to connect to the review. Uh, let me see a few of you. So, uh, so I'll, I'll make sure that this video is available for those who are not able to connect. Um, any other question? Uh, no, thank you. Okay, so if there's no questions, then good luck, and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.